Our final presentation will be given by Dr. Raman Tarioni. Dr. Tarioni is professor of ophthalmology at the University of Paris and department chair of ophthalmology at La Riboisière, Saint Louis, and Adolphe de Rochelle Foundation Hospitals in Paris, France. Dr. Tarioni has published more than 180 papers and textbook chapters and currently leads a French government funded research program on artificial intelligence for diabetic retinopathy. He is a European Society of Retina Specialists board member and is its president elect. Dr. Tarioni will be describing the relevance of the ANGE tie system to the role of vascular stabilization in health and disease across organ systems and the evidence for its importance in many diseases, including the retinopathies. Hello, dear colleagues. This presentation is about the angiopoietin tie system and its role in vascular stabilization in pathology. I'm Ramit Adeguini from Paris University. Here my disclosure. In this presentation, we will see that vascular stabilization is important for all tissues, including the retina. That overexpression of ANG2 causes vascular instability associated with pathology in many diseases that are characterized by vascular leakage, inflammation, or neovascularization. Angiopoietin 2 is elevated in return of neovascularization, and understanding the role of vascular stabilization depends our insight into the pathogenesis of vision loss in retinal vascular diseases. Blood vessels form an extensive physiological network throughout the body, bringing oxygen and micronutrient to all our cells. A specialized morphology of vasculature adapts the form to the function in every organ. For example, in the liver, vessels form sinusoid. In the lung, they wrap around alveoli. However, there are also similarities in vasculature between tissues. And for example, angiopoietin tie system for control vessels is conserved everywhere because in every location, vessels have and should conserve a unique and highly stabilized architecture to serve their function. In the kidney, they form glomeruli. When in the retina, they form plexus to supply oxygen without compromising transparency. Interestingly, elevated level of ANG2 have been observed across a number of diseases involving vascular pathology. For example, in cancer, renal diseases, non-healing wounds, even COVID-19, and retinal disease from neovascular AMD to DME and DR. Let's take a look at the evidence for increased ANG2 in these pathologies. In cancer, tumor angiogenesis is known to be a driver of disease progression. Unlike normal blood vessels, the tumor vasculature is heterogeneous, architectural abnormal, hyperpermeable, and unstable. ANG2 levels are elevated in cancer, and these elevated levels are associated with clinical outcome. For example, in patients with hepatocellular carcinoma, as you can see here in the left panel, high level of ANG2 versus low levels of ANG2 in the plasma are correlated with a twofold decrease in survival. In non-small cell lung cancer, as you can see in the right panel here, high level of ANG2 are also associated with significantly worsened overall survival than in patients with low ANG2 levels. Both these are statistically significant. ANG2 levels are also found to be associated with kidney disease. On the left panel, in this in vivo experiment, you can see a healthy controlled kidney of a mouse. ANG2 is stained in red and is barely visible. Glomerular architecture is normal. Basement membrane is stained in green and cell nuclei in blue. However, when in a mouse model with renal damage mimicking chronic kidney disease is examined, you can see dramatically disrupted vascular architecture and ANG2 here in red is highly stained. On the right panel here, we can see that the circulating level of ANG2 are low in healthy control subjects. In human with chronic kidney diseases, and it increases with the severity of the disease to be at their highest when peritoneal dialysis or hemodialysis are needed. ANG2 is also important for wound healing, where the stabilization of blood vessels is needed for wound angiogenesis. In venous leg ulcers, vessels are present but hard permeable and they are not well formed. On the left, 
is a patient with a venous leg ulcer in, and in the wound biopsy, we can see that leaking microvessels have led to accumulation of red blood cells and hemosiderin around the wound. This hyperpermeability causes also the discoloration seen in the skin around venous leg ulcers. Due to the abnormal vessel architecture, full wound healing is never completed here. On the right panel, you can see the non-healing venous leg ulcer in, is weeping due to hyperpermeability. And wound biopsy showed these weeping non-healing wounds express much higher level of ANG2 compared to normal skin or successfully healed ulcer. More recently, ANG2 have been linked to lung diseases such as acute respiratory distress syndrome and COVID-19, where leaky vasculature leads to non-cardiogenic pulmonary interstitial edema. This has implication for clinical outcome. In fact, elevated level of ANG2 in the circulation were associated with patient survival in COVID-19. On the left panel, you can see in, in non-survivals, there is elevated ANG2 at day three after hospital admission compared to COVID-19 survivals. Indeed, on the right panel, you can see by Kaplan-Meier curves that a high ANG2 level is strongly associated with poor cumulative survival while low ANG2 levels associated with good survival. Elevated ANG2 is also observed in retinal vascular diseases such as neovascular AMD, which are characterized by abnormal blood vessels and hyperpermeability. This has been studied by investigators at the Chinese University of Hong Kong to examine the link between ANG2 and neovascular AMD. Our colleagues enrolled 50 subjects and measured ANG2 in the acute tumor of treatment naive patients who were undergoing their first injection of anti-VHF therapy and compared that with acute levels of patients without AMD undergoing cataract extraction. What they found was a five and a half fold increase in ANG2 in eyes with neovascular AMD compared to controls in eyes without neovascular AMD. They also measured a number of other molecules that you can see here in this table. ANG2 also has been shown to correlate with disease in diabetes, which also has disruptive vascular architecture and hyperpermeability. Here, investigator from Helsinki University examined the eye of 39 diabetic patients who were undergoing vitrectomy for vitreous hemorrhage, GME, vitreo macular traction, or PDR with or without. Uh, traction of retinal detachment. They found that high intravitreal ANG2 correlate with DME and PDR and worse glycemic control with a p-value of 0.001. Another study from the same institution explored in 109 patients the correlation between ANG2 in the vitreous in diabetic patients undergoing vitrectomy and vitrectomy samples from patients without diabetes. They found that diabetic vitreous had sevenfold more ANG2 compared to the vitreous of non-diabetic subjects. When they examined the diabetic vitreous further, they found the highest level of ANG2 were in patients with peripherative diabetic retinopathy compared to non-peripherative diabetic retinopathy. Together, this correlation strongly suggests that ANG2 plays a role in diabetic retinal vascular disease. In summary, Vascular architecture is important across all organs. Elevated ANG2 is associated with disrupted vessel structure in diverse pathologies, ranging from cancer to COVID-19 and from neovascular AMD to DME or DR. In the retina, high ANG2 along with elevated VHF may be associated with poor visual acuity, macular thickness, and active neovascularization. Thus, the angiopoietin tie and VHF pathways play an important role in vascular homeostasis and in the pathogenesis of retinal vascular diseases. Here, a few references if you want to learn more, and thank you very much for your attention.